because somebody else asked me last night about that. Can you email Carrie Quarters to, no, Carrie Green and ask her when is she sending out the link for the um, CE class on, is it a CE class? Mm -hmm. On the- um, well, she already sent it out. When? I didn't what? see it. Now there's a new one. Oh, there's a new um, one. Yeah, Cheryl King's gonna do one, a new one on um, exclusive buyers oh. and, and, and the um, exclusive listing agreement oh, okay yeah they talked about that at team meeting yesterday so we need to get that
честные судьи, и вы создаете честное, хорошее правительство. Hey, Sarah, girl. Hi there, three. Oh my gosh, of course the landscapers are in my yard right now, but hopefully <laughs> in like three more minutes. Is it yeah. loud? Can you hear them? I can hear you. I can hear them, but it's not awful. Is it guys? Yeah. Can you guys hear it? It's not that bad, Sarah. Okay. Yeah. I can hear you now. Yeah. <laughs> it's working. All right, that is uh, the, the sign of the time zooming from home. I know, I love seeing people's little kitties and little dogs and so yeah. big, big dogs. I, I love uh, it. Mine's little and he's sleeping right there in the corner. So. Oh, that is so cool. That is so cool. <laughs> but I'll tell you, you guys are all in for a treat because I turn my monitor around because usually I'm in silhouette because the sun is in a direction that you can't see my camera. I moved my chair oh, yeah. and now you can see my face. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah. And you look absolutely gorgeous, girl. Oh, you're very sweet. You're absolutely very, very sweet. gorgeous. Love, so after, love, love that. After this, I'm gonna go sit in the model home at Amelia Walk. So if anybody wants to take a walk through the model at Amelia Walk, it's uh, just, if you put Amelia Walk into your Google Maps, it comes up. I'll be there until 4.30 today, so. Now tell me, is let me get my bearings. Is that the one on Shallowford or, or uh, Amelia, right over here? Right so over it's, here. Uh, let's see, it's off of uh, East Barrett Parkway. Um, yeah, like East Piedmont. So it's East in Sprayberry district yeah 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 so we're we're because that's my area that's where i live Trying to and so this is a 55 and up community uh-huh um it's piedmont and morgan roads oh yeah 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 yes 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 Super okay. cute. i mean they are so cute yeah my daughter keeps asking uh kelly you know why can't it be for everyone why does it have to be 55 and up but well, tell her, her, her actually for the 55 and up, if you're, if a couple of people, let's say the parents are 55, they can have an 18 year old in there or a 20 year old. Well, she has buyers, you know, in their 20s uh, and 30s because she'd like to sell these beautiful new homes to, but yeah. you know, that's how they got their permits. It's registered yeah. as a 55 and up community. Yeah, tell her she, they've got to earn the right to, to live in there. Then just That's right. And the right means you get old just like the rest of us, and then right. we can enjoy our community. That's right. Look, in the meantime, go to your condo somewhere in town. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, where you can go walk to the bars. <laughs> right? I don't know about you, Sarah, but I love faces, and I don't care what you guys look like. If Sarah is going to pour into us, Connie Davison, I'm going to just pick on you. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to see your name, Connie Davison. We don't want to see your beautiful face. That's right. I had to comb my hair, so. <laughs> and I had to put lipstick on. So come on, Caitlin, Ayana, Amy, Amy. Well, Amy's always good. Regina owes Connie Davison, really. I'm trying to. You guys. Michael, <laughs> oh, Michael Mellon is probably taking care of three babies. So Michael gets a pass. There she so is. Let me see. Hey, Connie. <laughs> hey, Connie, Connie. All right. You tell me whenever you're ready. Can you hear me? 
Yes, we can. Oh, oh, I was trying to get in and I couldn't, I couldn't get it to unmute. So, hey, Sarah, I can always I learn you. something new. So thank you for doing this today. Yeah, let I me get so. my notebook. Get my notebook. Can you get in? Oh, so you might, hold on, you guys. You might have the wrong link. Uh, Imani? I'm going to have Imani send it to you. Imani? Yeah, Keith is trying to get in. Let me see. Regina's making coffee, so <laughs> she'll be she'll be on camera shortly. Okay. <laughs> Can you send Keith the link? Yeah, I think he has a phone link. So my my listing, it, it's funny you asked me. I'm flattered that you asked me to do my listing presentation. I feel like my listing presentation is very conversational. Yeah. But yeah. Even, even, it, even though it's conversational, it's very methodical. Mm -hmm. I have bullet points and want to cover certain things. So I'll just start. You want me to go ahead and start? Let me um, wait a minute. Um, one second, Keith Sharp's been trying. Shop. Keith Gray has been trying to get in, but he had a previous link. So okay. while he's trying to get in, I just went into the um, training room because I'm up here in our Legion room. And I looked at the place that you sat and someday I might put a little plaque in there. And I was telling him the story about the first time you came, well, not maybe, maybe not the first time, but the first time I certainly said, all right, we're finished with our scripts practice now. Let's go ahead and make some calls, right? And yep. Sarah said to me, oh, Doreen, I don't know who to call. And I just looked at her and said, and with some people, you can just say it. Yeah. And with some people, you can, you kind of have to just baby them. With Sarah, I knew I could just say it, right? So I said, Sarah, just call your friends. She and did. That was my second day of Ignite. Okay, and tell them what happened when you called. So the first, the first person I called was a friend, and she was really nice, and she took my call, and she didn't hang up on me, and it was fine. And I was, I said, okay, now I have to call another friend. I was new to Atlanta, brand new, had been in Atlanta less than a year, brand new to real estate. You know, my call list was very short. My second call was to another friend, the first friends that befriended us and we went to dinner as a couple. And she later left her corporate job and became a builder. Um, she's now a general contractor. And six months later, she asked me if I would help her sell two of their spec homes in Midtown, 1.5 million and 1.6 million new construction. Wow. That was a good second call. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so we we tell that story all the time. We tell that story to encourage you guys. Right? Yeah. And you know, get creative and think about who you who you know. I mean, the calls that I've made, I mean, you know, I have a painter that I use and I refer him all the time. Guess who he calls when he knows somebody that's getting ready to sell? It's a partnership. My handyman, I use him constantly. Sometimes he knows someone that's selling and he actually bought a house himself this year. So even though you think your list is very small, practice on your friends because they're, they're gonna be more forgiving than the cold calls and strangers. All right, great. All right, All right, so with that said, Sarah, go right on in and take, we'll take it away. Okay, so um, when I go into a listing appointment, I want to look like I, would, I am in charge. And I learned this from somebody at Quan, maybe Paige Morgan, I don't remember who, wish I could give them credit, but you don't wanna walk, if you ever walked in the door and someone says, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to, do you want to take the tour? Do you want to, what do you want to do? And you're like, oh, that's fine. No, you're a professional. The doctor doesn't say, do you want me to listen to your heart or your pulse first? 
you have to be in charge. So I want to sit down. So I say, is there a place that we can sit down? I want to set my bag down and we can sit and chat for a minute. No one has ever said no. So I sit down and I tell them, look, I want to tell you what I want to cover in this meeting. And the first thing I want to make sure I understand are your goals and your criteria. So let's talk about that for a minute. Where are you going? What are your plans? How can I help you get there? And we have a great conversation. Sometimes that conversation takes 15, 20 minutes. And once I understand, we ask questions back and forth, that's when I go into my other goals for the meeting. So the, the second goal that I have for this meeting, now that I understand where you're going and what you want, my second goal is to educate you on the market. And the third thing I wanna do is develop a strategy so that when we're done today, you're so comfortable and confident that you hire me to help you get to your next step. Um, the next thing I want to know, what are the questions that you want? What are the things you want to make sure that I cover today? Because I have a lot of information and I want to make sure I hit the points that are most important to you. Go over those questions. And then we I'm getting ready to. So then we take the tour, go through the house. I talk a little bit about marketing while we're going through the house. Um, so when I ask them what their questions were for yeah, today's right. Hold on one second, Sarah. Nina, for some reason, I cannot mute you. Oh, hang on. Wait a minute. I got it. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> um, for the purposes of this today, I'm going to say that your questions are, what's my house worth? Everyone wants to know that. Yeah. Then you also want to know how we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. And then you want to know what you need to do to get top dollar. Yeah. Um, so now we've done the tour and we're going to sit down. And the first thing I want to do is educate you a little bit on the market. So you know things are flying off the market. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't be, we, we still have to be smart about it. So the first thing I'm going to do is share my screen. Oh no, I can't. It won't let me share screen. I can, I can, get, I can make you the host. Hold, hold on. Okay. Well, it's not that important, but what I do is I pull out a quick CMA. Um, and with the quick CMA, I do an absorption report because that helps me and it helps me educate them. Hang on, I'm gonna, um, come on. Sarah, how specific do you do your CMA knowing that you haven't been in the house yet and you don't know really what that house can bring to you to the table? Well, I, in my, before I go on the appointment, I have a pre-qualification sheet that I ask a lot of questions about the house. So, I, I can get pretty specific, but you know, I would say 30% of the time I walk into a house and it's not what I had comped out at all. And that's when I say, hey, listen, this surprised me. So I'm gonna go through the comps that I have with me, but I'm gonna probably need to schedule an appointment and come back after I've looked at them a little closer and you know, compared them to gotcha. exactly what you have. So, if, and that's it, that's a really great, great question, Liz. If they don't hire me on the spot, I have an appointment to come back. That's how you're it works. Not, what? You're not co host. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You can so, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So, so, I will always bring a quick CMA, but it, I mean, this means nothing to them. This is just, stats and numbers, but I find a spot on here. I mean, I have a separate form that I could do it, but I write it right on here and I do an absorption report. So I'm gonna go through you with you how I'm gonna educate them on the market. So this is area 81. So it's East Cobb. 
So what I'm gonna, what I would do is write in here that last year, and this is in the past 360 days, I'll show you down here. So it's 81 between 500 and 600 in the past year. So if you look up, you're gonna see that 80 homes sold. I'm gonna take 80 and add to it the 10 homes that are pending. So now I have 90 recent successes. I divide 90 by 12 months in a year and I come up with 45 homes sell per month between five and 600 in area 81. Now, that sounds like a lot, doesn't it? So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna see how many homes we have for sale. We have nine. There are nine actives. So I can divide that by the 45 that sell per month and you can do the math in your head. It's 0.2 months of inventory. It's like two weeks of inventory. Um, and if you even, if you look a little closer here, I've got one, definitely one, two, three, four that are new construction, five. So half of these aren't even built. So there is no inventory. So what do you think that means for you, Mr. Seller? A dollar. <laughs> High dollar, that's right. There is not a lot of competition. So... And that's, that's what I want to explain to you, but even knowing that there's not a lot of competition, a lot of sellers will think, well, guess what? I'm going to shoot for the moon. You said five to 600. I'm going to list my, I want to sell it for 700. But that's not how the market works. Just like you, the market is very educated. They have the internet at their fingertips and they know what things are worth and they, they do not want to overpay. So when we come up with a price for your home, I want you to understand that this is a strategy. It's not the end game. This is a strategy to get the most buyers in your door so that we can get the best offer with the most favorable terms. And you, know, you had mentioned that you want to move on and downsize a little bit. So you're gonna be a buyer. And I want you to put a buyer's hat on and think about if you're looking for a home and you, you know the area is worth between five and 600 and there's a home in there that's listed at 700. How, are you, how will you go about it? Will you even know about it? Probably not. So that's why we wanna go with my strategy to get that buyer in the door. Might you pay 700 for it? Maybe you would, but would you even know it was available if it was way off the radar? Probably not. So now we wanna go through, does someone have a question? Yes, I have two questions. So two questions. The one is the report that you pulled, is that something you got out of FMLS? Like how did you get that report that you used yes. to show us? Yes, it's okay. a quick CMA. So all I did was say area 81 between five and 600. I checked all and at the bottom, there's a thing for quick CMA and it pulls the report. And why did you do the five to 600? I just picked it. I'm okay. just saying my seller is in that price range. So I'll, you know, I know what, have a pretty good idea of the range that the house is worth and I'll target my CMA the quick CMA based on that. Okay, got it, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so that's kind of the, the macro view of it. And I'm sure you're hearing in the news, their listings are low, it's the seller's market and it is. So let's go through um, what your house might be worth. We're gonna go through the comps and we're gonna compare you have a couple neighbors that have sold, so we're gonna look at those. And I, I want you to notice that there are a couple neighbors that I didn't even bring the comparables with me because you don't have a basement and some of them do. 
So would you agree that the buyer that wants a house with a basement might be different from the buyer that wants a house without a basement? Yes. So I want to target this marketing towards your buyer. And that's how we're gonna come up with the price. And it's similar to the way an appraiser is gonna come up with a price. So we'll go through the comps. And as we go through each one, I ask for their opinion. So, okay, you know this house, right? This is your neighbor, Charlie, right? You've been in the house, that's even better. Would you say Charlie's kitchen is better or worse than yours? Oh, mine's way better. Great. So you have some more updates. How about Charlie's yard? Oh, Charlie has a great yard. Okay, so you don't have as great a yard. So we're gonna go through each one and I have numbers that I plug in for the difference of each uh, difference, basically. Mm -hmm. And I usually make a pile. These are no good. We don't like this one because of it has a great yard or it has a basement. You know, we have two piles and at the end I have our favorites and they all, they see me, I put stars on it. So these are the ones. And then sometimes in that favorites pile, I'll have a target. Like, oh, this one's sold for a lot. Let's, let's dig deeper and figure out what caused it to sell for that great price. And we'll go through it. And, and that will help me tell you the things that you might want to do to put your house on the market. And then I'm gonna to explain to you. So now this one that sold for this great price, this was three months ago, which doesn't seem like a long time ago, but the market has changed. And three months ago, sellers had to do a little bit more than we have to do now. Because as you saw, there are nine actives. So we have to do less. So my advice to you, looking at these comps, you had mentioned you wanted to change that stained carpet out. I think that's a good idea because it, when we market your house, we want to get that buyer emotionally attached. And it's really hard to get emotionally attached when you have a half a million dollars to spend on a house and you walk in and there's pea stains on the family room rug. Would you agree that could be a turnoff? So I, I agree with you that, that that might be a great thing to do, but I'm not saying you have to. I can sell a house in any condition for the right price. Mm -hmm. So if you don't wanna do it, we don't have to do it. But to get top dollar, I think that that might help you. Um, and yeah, we definitely have to do less. So for me, when I sell a house, I think of it like winning a beauty contest. How do you win a beauty contest? You have to be the best. You have to be the most talented and, and the best dress and best personality. And would you agree that when you enter a beauty contest and you only have two other competitors, you have a pretty good chance of winning, right? Right now, that's where we're at. So you're gonna enter this beauty contest. If we go on the market in the next two weeks, you're gonna have two people to compete against. And I say that's a really good shot at winning. Now, if you enter the beauty contest three months from now, when there are 45 other contestants competing for the same buyer, would you agree that you might have to do a little bit more? Yes. Yes. So. That's why now is a great time. And it's also why I can't tell you exactly what you're gonna to need to do three months from now because the market has changed so much this year. I say like COVID is like, it's broken all the rules. Spring is no longer spring. Summer is no longer summer. Everything is different. So we have less predicting power than we have ever had. But I can tell you where we're at right now. If you want top dollar, I can help you get there right now. Um, and so now you, you wanted to know how we go about this. How are we gonna get your house sold? And 
I want to tell you a little bit about marketing because that's how we sell houses. Right now we have to appeal to buyers in cyberspace. So to do that, we need to get your house ready. And that doesn't always mean spending money. Part of my marketing is I'm gonna help you figure out what we need to do to appeal to more buyers. So we're gonna declutter. We're going to um, pre-pack. You know, that, that closet upstairs, that, that amazing closet, would you agree that if you packed up all your summer clothes, that it would look like 10 times bigger? That's amazing, so, pre-packed. Yeah, yeah. That's an amazing yeah. spin on words. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, I talk about prepacking all the time and I say, look, it's just going to make your job easier once I get a contract on your house. It's less that you have to do. So the clothes that you don't need right now, we're going to we're going to go ahead and get rid of it. We're going to look in the closets in uh, your kids' bedrooms that don't live with you anymore. And when I see your clothes in there, I want you to imagine the emotion that the buyer is going to feel when they open that closet. It's obviously not a used room. It's spotless and clean. How, how would you feel when you open up that closet and you see men's suits in there? My reaction is, uh-oh, there's not enough closet space. Yeah. They've had to overflow into other closets. So let's prepack or donate. You're not using them, you're not going to work. There's great organizations that could really use stuff right now. And I'll help put you in touch with them. Do you make a suggestion on where to store like a pod or is there some uh, less expensive form of storage for them on a temporary basis? So actually um, Keller Williams or pod gives a discount to uh, sellers that are using Keller Williams. So, and they'll take that pod away. The sellers while they're prepping can pack it up and they'll take that pod away. I never mind you storing anything in boxes, neat and clean, either in the basement or the garage, as long as you can walk around them. And buyers understand you're moving. And again, in this market, we have to do less, but neat and clean. Uh, my favorite, I tell sellers this all the time, my favorite feedback and comment that I hear is, do they actually live here? that's the best compliment a seller can ever get and I tell my sellers that I want them to be so think about what that that saying how that elicits emotion they live here this is how they live oh my gosh I bet their filters don't even have a, a speck of dust on them it it it's an emotion how well you've taken care of the house. So part of my marketing is getting that buyer emotionally attached to your house. So I want them to have that feeling. Um, my marketing, first of all, I want to talk about who we think our buyer is. So you live in area 81, great schools. Who's the buyer for this house? Who do you see living here? A young that, couple. Yeah, that elicits the emotion from them. Children and a dog. Yes, I agree. We don't have a master on Main in this house. So I think our target buyer is a young family. So part of my marketing is knowing who that buyer is and then marketing directly to them. My next step is marketing to the agents of those buyers. And I do that every time we put it on the market, I am marketing those agents. So that's, you know, I want them to know, hey, look, here we are. Um, and, you know, the third part of my marketing is getting them emotionally attached. And we'll work on that together. This is, this is a group effort. So, now you understand how this works. Are you ready to hire me to help you sell this house today? And if you want to throw out an objection, Irene, Arthurine, you're welcome to. 
Well, um, I like everything that you're saying, um, Sarah. Um, like I told you before, I am talking to other agents and yes, I will hire you, um, but you have to do something on your commission. I think 6% right now in this market with everything selling so fast, I could just put it on the throw a sign in my yard and put it on Zillow and sell it myself. So yeah, I, I will list with you if you do it for 4%. I hear what you're saying, Authorine, and I don't disagree with you at all. Finding the buyer is not hard in this market. Okay. But do you know what is hard? Mm. Would you like to know what's hard in this market? Sure. It's hard, hard to keep this deal together. It's hard to get you the most favorable terms. So if you find that buyer, are you checking with their lender to make sure that you're qualified? Well, Are you reaching out to others, making sure that there's no other offers coming in, that you've gotten the best offer? That's a good one. When I, um, I do so many things. There are, most sellers, you know, because it what I do, I make it look easy because it, it is easy for you. I'm going to take all the stress off of you. There are plenty of agents that would be willing to discount their commission. And that is absolutely an option. I, the average Metro Atlanta agent sells houses for 96% of the list price. That's not bad, right? Right. My average is 90, my average is 98%. So oh. right off the bat, I'm netting you more. And that's what my skill set does. You know, corporations hire, spend millions of dollars to hire top negotiators. And they don't do it because they feel like it. They do it because that's how they make money. And that's what most of my clients do when they hire me is they know that I'm going to negotiate for them. There are five points of negotiation with the sell, home sale. Did you know that? No. First, it's finding the buyer. We need to find that buyer and make sure it's the best buyer. Qualify that buyer. Then the buyer is going to do an inspection. Now, I would say, even if you put this on the market yourself, the buyer probably is going to have an agent like me that's an yeah. excellent negotiator. How do you yeah. feel about negotiating against it? Well, it's not your strong. No, no, I can make my hearts look pretty. I, I don't want to haggle back and forth. Right. So I, and I'll tell you a quick story. I had a seller who had signed the agreement with me. We were getting ready to sell the house and he got a knock on the door from an agent with a buyer. And he called me and he said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. They're writing a full price offer, I, you know? And I said, I'm happy for you. I wanted you to get this song and it's gonna be great. I'm, I'm so happy for you. And I stayed in touch with him and I actually just spoke with him a couple days ago and he told me the story that the buyer did an inspection even though it was an as is sale and the agent negotiated $20,000 in repair money. Wow. And I said to him, I said, tell me what the repair was. He said something about the sewer line. And he said, I brought my plumber out you know, yesterday and the plumber was like, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. And I said, Art, I'm so sorry. I wished, I wish I was helping you because not only would I have saved you that $20,000, but I probably would have gotten you more on the front end because I would have exposed it to the whole market. When you just take an offer and haven't exposed it to the market, you don't know what the true market value is. And he was very upset. Mm -hmm. You don't wanna go up and negotiate against someone like me. You yeah. want me in your corner. So mm -hmm. let me help you. I will earn every penny and I will help you net the most. Let's go through that paperwork right now. 
Okay, all right. I have I have one other question though. You said you're gonna market it to the whole world, and you know I live alone, and I don't want people coming in all hours of night. So how are you gonna control that? That's a great question, Authorine. So I'm gonna control it, and you're gonna help me control it. You're gonna tell me what hours work for you, mm -hmm. and I tell my sellers. Can you give me seven days? Seven days of yes. And they're like, what? What does that mean? Yeah. I need you to figure out a way to help me say yes to every showing for seven days. I like that. I like that. I know, you know, sometimes there's, I have a seller who had three dogs, two cats and two children. And she was like, oh my God, what am, how am I going to do this? Yeah. And I said, seven days. How can you give me seven days? I've actually had two people. I probably have had more than that. But most recently, one of them, she called me up the week before listing. She's like, look, I'm going to my mom's. Here's the key. I'm taking the kids, the dogs, the cats. I'm <laughs> giving you seven days. Plant that seed at the meeting. Okay. Not, you know, after you get the first showing request. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had another seller um, who called me and said, you know what, we're going to go visit the parents this week. Do you think we could get it on the market that quickly? And I said, yes, I can. And we put it on the market. Someone else was watching those hamsters or they were guinea pigs, big smelly guinea pigs. I was like, who's to get them out? And I had the house for a week. So if you can give me a week of yeses, so both of those clients that gave me that week of yeses, both got $25,000 over their asking price. That's what a week of yeses will give you. So think about this now. We're going to work together and, you know, I, we need to come up with a plan. I know you've got these fur babies and how are we going to get them out and keep them happy while we get you top dollar? And they almost always come up with a plan. Um, did that answer your question, Authorine? Yes. Any other questions? No, ma'am. Let's go through this paperwork. I want to go through it so you understand what you're signing. And let's let me start marketing this today. Yes, ma'am. Let's go. Okay. Questions. <laughs> Sarah, um, it's Connie. Back to you had talked about how there were five points of negotiation. I'm a note taker. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got finding the buyer, qualifying them, the inspection. What are the other two? Appraisal, finance. So I do spend time with appraisal. Um, I, I do talk to sellers about that, and especially in this market. Um, we're struggling with appraisals. Mm -hmm. um, and I explained to sellers, look, appraisers are looking in the rear view mirror. They mm -hmm. don't do what you and I do. I'm looking ahead. I, they're, they're not doing what I do, showing you that there's nine active listings that meet our criteria. They're looking in the back and saying, well, 45 homes sold last year. Nope, this is what it's worth. So I need to spend a lot of time with the appraisal and, and making sure that we can appraise. And that's one of the points of negotiation. When we take a contract and it's $25,000 over where I feel super comfortable that it can appraise, I'm going to work to get that appraisal contingency waived. And that's not something that you know what to do or if you go with the discount broker that they're going to do for you, they're just going to come back on day 21 of your contract. Now on day 30, you're moving out, right? On day 21, you're going to get a phone call from the bank that says, I'm sorry, Mr. Seller, your appraisal came in $20,000 under the sales price. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, the buyer has the right to ask you to reduce the sales price. So that's another point of negotiation. Mm -hmm. um, I want to avoid that. So I spend a lot of time with an appraisal package. I spend a lot of time on the front end negotiating that appraisal, especially if the only reason we took it is because this, the other buyers have bid up the price. Yeah. Anything that you 
Or is there a packet that you leave behind? How do you normally, I know we went over the, the CMA, but is there anything reviewing wise, presentation wise that you utilize when you're talking to them? Um, I have, um, I have a, a listing thing that I don't use anymore. I used to use it more for me because yeah. I didn't want to forget any of those things, but now it's much more conversational. Um, it, it depends on the, the seller. So, you know, sometimes I do have that seller that um, doesn't agree on the price and that's hard. And in this market, I'm finding my answer is yes, we'll give it a try. Let's give it to me. And if you're not happy with the activity, if we're not getting the exposure that we were hoping to get, then we've got to figure this out. But um, I, I used to say no to an overpriced listing. And I used to, like, I keep this in my packet. It's just a little graph, the history of an overpriced listing that kind of shows you price it here, you drop the price. Eventually what happens, I explained to the seller that, you know, what, when you are, you're, you're a buyer too, you're looking on the market and you see a home has been on the market for a hundred days. What's the emotion that goes through your head? Something wrong. Yeah. Something's wrong with it. Wonder what's wrong. And, and I get that call all the time. What do you think is wrong with that house? Why is it still on the market? And the number one reason it's still on the market is because it was overpriced. And remember when we talked about in the beginning, you wanted to price it at 700. And I said, maybe that's not the best strategy. And this is why, because when you pri overprice it, you typically end up getting less than what you would have gotten if you priced it strategically and got the activity that you deserve. You're never more valuable than the first 14 days on the market. So when you miss that window, you have to start at zero. But that's changing and I'm not talking about overpricing as much anymore. <laughs> you have to roll with this market. What documents do you take with you for signature on that day? Everything. Everything. I take the listing agreement, the wire fraud and the affiliated marketing. Those are the three I take. I have with me the seller's disclosure and the community association and lead paint if it applies. So you print everything and have them fill it out by hand and then scan it in back to you? So the listing agreement, wire fraud and marketing, I do all by hand. Okay. The seller's disclosures, I go over them with them and the, and the HOA disclosures, I review them with them and I tell them I can send this to you electronically or I can leave these with you, it's your choice. Uh, I find that I work with a lot of um, seniors that would rather have the hard copy. Awesome, so, thanks. So I bring that, um, I go, and you know, to me, that's just more of the education process as I go through that seller's disclosure. I tell them what to look for. What, I tell them to be super careful on this last page and check the things you're looking at. <coughs> if you have left it over paint and you want to leave it, you better check it or else that buyer is gonna ask us to remove it. And I've had to literally have my whole team come and pick up three truckloads of paint that the seller didn't check that was staying. So I'm very methodical and careful about that list. And then the HOA disclosure, I go through that and I tell them, look, you're writing down the name and the address and the phone number of your HOA contact. When you're doing that, call them or email them and find out if there's a transfer or initiation fee. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, we don't all go to the HOA meetings and they make changes and we don't know about them. And what happens if we don't disclose that fee at closing, you're going to pay it. And I told you, I'm going to keep money in your pocket. So make that call, send that email and get clarification. I've had people get caught on it. I've had people tell me there wasn't one and I had a feeling there was, and I called and I called the seller and I said, I'm resending you the documents. There's a thousand dollar HOA initiation fee. And they were like, what, how can that be? So, you know, that's part of my service is, is educating them.
Any other questions? How long do you usually, uh, uh, how long do you, uh, I guess, uh, negotiate the um, listing agreement to be for? Um, like two months, three months, four months? I always make it six months unless a seller requests that we do it less. Um, okay. I tell them that my, that it's can't, you can cancel this at any time. I, ex I go through that and explain to them that if, if I'm not doing what you think I should be doing or what I said I was going to do, I want you to be able to walk away. And so you can cancel this at any time. I will not ask you to reimburse me for any of my expenses. The only way I get paid is if you're happy with me and I do a good job and we go to the closing table. Um, I even explained the protection period that, you know, the protection period is if, it, basically if someone, if a buyer comes in through my marketing and says, hey, Mr. Seller, take this off the market. I, I'm gonna buy it for you and we'll cut out those real estate agents. And then, and then I laugh and, you know, not that I think you're that kind of people. And they're like, no, we definitely aren't. And I said, well, obviously they're out there because some attorney thought it was important to put it in this document. Um, but I'm protected for 90 days if you fire me. And they're like, we're not gonna fire you, yay. But I want you to know that if you do fire me and you hire someone else, that that protected period goes away. So you really aren't obligated to me for anything, especially if I don't do a good job. You mentioned that you do a typical six months for the agreement period. What's the longest you would be comfortable with? And I asked because I've got several sellers that want me helping them prepare now, but they don't want to list for a year because of circumstances within their families. So, I mean, on the new listing agreement, you would put today is the date that it starts. And then I would put the list date on a projected list date. So if, if it's six months from now, I would say, okay, uh, July 3rd, we'll start the listing agreement and it will run for six months from then. So my listing agreement runs from when we go on the market, basically. Any other questions, comments? Can you share how, um, how you did your first listing as a new agent or your first listing itself? Because as a newer agent, you kind of have a little bit of nerves on how that would go and being either overprepared or underprepared. So just wanted to get your feedback on what's the best strategy when you get a listing, the first listing. Okay, so for a listing appointment? Yes. Okay. Um, the first ones are the hardest but I would lean on Keller Williams, on Quan, on those numbers. Um, I you know, used to lean on the team's numbers, but basically if you go in with confidence and think about, you know, be, you're the CEO of your own business, you're gonna walk in to this meeting and you're gonna run this meeting. Do not let the sellers run the meeting. The only time I ever shift and maybe do a little bit of the tour is if we're going to lose light and I want to see the backyard first. Other than that, I'm running this meeting. Um, lean on Keller Williams stats. And I don't think you can be over prepared. Um, but also remember that sometimes you need to go, it needs to be a second step appointment. Never be afraid of that. If you walk in and you're like, oh gosh, I didn't prep right, or this isn't what I thought it was, or I should have done something differently, let them know. And sometimes I'll say, look, you know, if an agent comes in and says they can give you a price. She's gonna I cover her eye immediately, watch. See? Maybe because yeah. it's bright. I'm muting Evelyn. <laughs> um, yeah, if they don't know, um, yeah, so, yeah, sometimes I might say, it, if another agent can come in and price this 
before even seeing it, I would be suspicious of that because I'm pretty good at pricing and I need a little bit more time. So can I do a little more homework and can I meet back up with you either on Zoom or come back over tomorrow night? Set, if, they do, if they don't sign that listing agreement that night, set the next appointment. If they're interviewing other agents, set the next appointment. Do not walk away without an action item. What do you say exactly when you set the next appointment? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it depends on what I need. So, you know, if they, if they, I, I mean, I have lots of clients that say, oh my gosh, we don't even know if we're moving. We don't know what to do. We need time. And, I, you know, I need to understand their objections. So, you know, I'll tell them, look, most people hire me on the spot. So if, you need time. I'm concerned that I maybe skipped something and, and didn't answer all your questions. So do you mind if we go back and just cover everything and make sure I answered your questions? What are your, what are your worries? Are you worried it will sell too fast? And don't help them. Ask. what well, I'm only helping because no one's answering me back. But Ask the question, what are you concerned about? I'm concerned, Sarah, that you're going to sell it so fast that in this market, I'll be homeless. Oh, I don't want that. And knock on wood, I've never had anyone be homeless yet. Exactly. That's exactly what you say. Because uh, it, it, it's a, it breaks the ice. Yep. And then everybody okay. smile and relax yeah i'm telling you i just had a client we sold her house it was a 1.6 million dollar house sold it way faster than she expected and she was in a panic i found her a rental because so remember when i talked about those seven days of yeses mm -hmm. when we go on the market i also want you to be ready for a yes there is nothing worse than going on the market and getting an incredible offer and you having to say no. So mm -hmm. we're gonna to work together and find that perfect time when you're gonna be ready to say yes. If you're not ready to say yes, we're gonna hold. We're gonna wait. Because I had one that was on the market for a million, 1.1 million. They got an offer in the first 30 days, asking price. And they said, no, they wanted to live out the school year. And I begged, I was like, please, I'll find you a cool apartment by the Brave Stadium. You kids can watch the games at night. You're going to have fun. So I just left them there. And they said, no. And we sat on the market for six months and ended up getting 950 for that house. Wow. So that's, that's what damaging the listing will do. So we, we are not going to damage your listing, Arthurine. We are going to wait. We're going to find that time that when you're ready to say yes. So tell me what's important about that. Is it figuring out where we're going? Dick, about the checks that I got relating to mom and dad. And, uh... Uh, I have a question. I have a question. It's Liz. So let's say we list in Feb 1 and they don't want to move till May. Are you going to say to them, listen, you can do it and control your offers and your closing date, but we should wait. It's a little early because we know how hot the market is right now. What would yeah. you do? Um, I would say what I would ask the seller. Okay. We go on the market about? February 1, we get an over asking price. They refuse to move twice. They're building a house. Do you wait to list or do you rock and roll and say, we are just going to have to find the buyer that has no problem or we close and rent back? I would ask the seller, what will happen if we get a full price offer on your house and they want to move in in 30 days? They've already said no. Then I then they're too early to list. Yeah. yeah. So, we and I would just say, unless... You know, there, there's a chance, but the chance is very small that that buyer is going to be willing to wait six months. 
So I want you to be able to say yes, because I don't want to damage the listing by saying no. Thanks. Who else? Anybody, any other questions? That's really, a, I'm going to damage your listing. That, I'm sorry, but that's brilliant too. What? Yeah, for president. <laughs> <laughs> what was brilliant? I, I want to I wanna hear compliments. <laughs> what, what was brilliant, Liz? Using the term damage your listing. Oh yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Tracy. But yeah, because that's what it does. And I have, I have stories and evidence. I've been doing this long enough. I can tell you what it's gonna to do to you. And mm -hmm. the, the risk far outweighs the benefit. Mm -hmm. You have to say no. Yeah. We need yes. So how do we get to yes? What if I find you an Airbnb? What if yeah. I find you a, a rental? What if, what if, what if, what if you stay in my basement? I've offered that many times. My husband would literally <laughs> shoot me, but I've offered and no one ever's taken me up. So I'm lucky. One <laughs> had two giant mastiff dogs. So. Um, yeah, how do we get you to say yes? Because the more yeses you can say, the more successful your sale is going to be. Sarah, it's Connie. I have a, a question regarding, uh, you said before you go to the listing appointment, mm -hmm. uh, you send them, or I don't know if you do it by phone or you send them something to fill out. What is that sort of pre-listing information that you're gathering? Is it like how much did they owe on the house? What updates have been done? What all are you asking them for in advance? So I'm asking what is their primary objective when they sell? Um, when you sell, what will you do next? Um, have you thought about a price? I like to know. Kelly Allen doesn't like to know. But I don't want to be blindsided. I can't tell you how many listings I've gone into and they want 700 and my comps are saying 550. And then I, I dig even deeper and I find maybe we can get that seven. So I want to know what their expectations are. And are um, you asking this in a call or is it a call. form you're filling out? How are you getting the information back? It's a call. Okay. Phone conversation. Um, yeah, I ask what they think the condition of the home is. I ask them to rate it from one to 10. Mm -hmm. A lot. Um, I used to ask, so tell me about updates. And they're like, oh, we've done the kitchen and the bathrooms. And I get there and I'm like, okay, so you did the kitchen in 1990. <laughs> <laughs> so I've reframed the question, rate your house as a on a yeah. scale of one to 10. Um, the condition. When did you update? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's they're so proud. It's really hard sometimes. <laughs> I wanna know if there's anything positive or negative that would affect a buyer's opinion. And that's hopefully some, some people don't even know that they're next to power wires, power lines, but hopefully you'll hear that. Um, but it's, it's a, it's a conversation. I want to know what they want to learn. So I'm, I'm asking it then. So I go in prepared and I ask them when I get there as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, it sounds like you're, you're doing sort of naturally, uh, so I can't remember who it was that I, I listened to a class years ago and they talked about if you can put it in your mindset that you're not in a listing presentation, you're in a listing consultation. Yes. Uh, a presentation is more like you're standing, you know, someone professor standing in front of a classroom and doing a lecture. And that, you know, your style is much more conversational. And I think that's, um, that's awesome. Thank, so thank you. you. You know, and it, it appeals, you know, we've been doing a lot of disc training and it appeals to different discs. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. the D probably wants, but I try to figure out their disc before I go and I will do it with those questions that I'm asking. Mm -hmm. If they're telling me, oh yeah, we did it. We did an update five years ago. Yeah. No, we have out of detail. Yeah. Then I'm like, oh boy, they're a D. I got to come with numbers. Stat yeah. numbers. I bottom gotta line. Them. Bottom line. Less the stories. C's, the C's like the numbers. The D's, which I am a D. The D just bottom line me. Yeah. Some of the 
don't give me the the percentage or the square root or the the, the square feet or nothing like just bottom line me bottom line me yep. and don't make it a presentation conversation please yep yeah, yeah no stories for those d's they 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 go crazy yeah mm -hmm. all right so sarah if there are no other questions we are going to thank her from the bottom of our hearts and let her go so we Yes. Three, you question. Sorry. Yes, you do. Okay, go ahead, Michael. Um, I'm meeting with someone this week if they want to sign for the listing and they don't want to list until April or May 1st. Sarah? Okay, there's nothing wrong with that because you're going to start working on it now. You're going to help them prep getting ready for the for the sale. You're going to understand what is important about them listing in April or May. And, you know, I do a lot of pre-marketing, but for that seller, that's like not going anywhere. I don't want to do anything until April. I'm mm -hmm. going to hold off on some of that pre-marketing because I don't want to stress them out with people. Cause with this right. I'm just talking about the listing, the specific date on the listing agreement when the contract starts. So like I dated on the listing agreement versus starting the listing. So there's two dates on the 2021 um, listing agreement. The one date is when you sign the agreement, basically, is how I look at it. The other date is when you will actually go on the market. So there's two dates in there, which I love. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So question. Yeah. I have a question with the market the way it is. And us kind of, and you're going to laugh because we're in this right now, Sarah. So, you know, everybody's looking for lists. He's looking for, hey, do you have something? I got a buyer. Yep. Don't I, in a way, have to say to somebody, listen, I'll let you in before everybody else, but I've got to list it because if we get into multiple and we go 20 higher and somebody's going to waive their appraisal by 20K, blah, blah, blah. So it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting time right now because as much as I want to quote unquote say I'm going to pre market their home, Yep. If I get a full price offer before it even goes active, right? Somebody coming coming soon, I still have to list it in fairness to the seller. I agree. How and are you I'm, handling every day? So I just um, I had one meeting last week with a seller, and they were like, "Oh, all right, we're going to think about it." And then I told my team about it, and there two of the agents were like, "Get a scan." So I was like, yay, okay, got them in, got the appointment. And then I was like, oh my gosh, they haven't signed. We don't have anything. So I back out to the seller and I said, look, okay, so, so awesome that we have this buyer that wants to see the house at 11 o'clock on Saturday. How about if I come over at 10, I want to go over the paperwork and I want to strategize because I want you to understand how I see this working. And that's exactly what they were like, okay. So I went at 10 o'clock and I said, look, I mean, if this buyer wants to buy this house, yay. But then we have to put our pedal, our foot on the gas because then I want to list this next week because it's not fair to you if we don't go to the market. Yeah. Because what if we could get 20,000 over? They were like, well, if we can, we want to. And I said, okay. So just understand that the purpose of this showing is to expose it a little bit, get some feedback and decide if we're pushing, putting our foot on the gas or our foot on the brake. And Excellent. they were like, great, okay. That's yes. great. Yeah. But, yeah, just remember, I mean, and I, I talked to Kelly about this this week and I talked to our team, you know, we're doing all this creative stuff, helping buyers find off market inventory, get, the permission to show unlisted property. Yeah. Um, Cause otherwise you could be completely cut out. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got your buyer's brokerage agreement hopefully, but get that permission to show unlisted property. I wished I had done that before, you know, have, having to backtrack and then coming up with a strategy, it worked out, but it, it helps to have that commission conversation before you bring someone in the house. Awesome. awesome. All right. 
I appreciate you more than you know. Oh, thank you. Thanks for all your nice words, everybody. I love uh, I love doing this. It made me practice, but yeah. you know, like I said, it's on conversation. I'll be at Amelia Walk this afternoon. If anyone wants to come take a look at it, if you've got some seniors, come and check it out. Absolutely. And this will be record. It's been recorded. It will be uploaded to Quan Train um, sometime this week. So if you guys would like to go in and watch her presentation again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. I'm going to make that plaque that says Sarah. Awesome. Just <laughs> thank you. All right. Love you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Well done, Sarah. Thanks, David. Bye bye. Bye. Quick question. Quick question. Where did um, Arthurine say it was going to be uploaded? I didn't hear that. Well, on our Quan Train YouTube. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Sarah. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Hey, Tracy. Ha, 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 ha.